everybody. Thanks for tuning in to Borgeson. I'm Jefferson from Red Dirt Rods. Today, I'm going to show you how to properly center a gearbox and how to measure the pitman arm output shaft. First, I'm going to show you how to center a gearbox. There are multiple ways to do this, but this is by far the most simple. So first thing that we need to do is turn the gearbox all the way to one side of the lock. Right there, we've confirmed that is the lock position for the left side. So we'll take a marker and we're just going to draw a little line right here on our U-joint or the input shaft. And I'm going to make a little mark on the body of the gearbox so that I know when this line passes this line, that is a full turn. Next, we're going to turn the gearbox and count every full turn. So that's one. Two, three, and that stops right about here. We're going to call that three and three quarter. So this gearbox has a three and three quarter lock to lock ratio. So we divide that by two. That gives us one and seven eighths of a turn. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this back all the way over here. Take this back to our second mark that we made. That's one. Then we're gonna go ahead and turn this all the way back to about seven eighths. Be really close to dead on center, but here's the trick. It doesn't have to be exact. You don't have to be within a couple of degrees for your gearbox to be centered. The reason for that is down here at the pitman arm shaft. The reason that you don't have to have your gearbox centered to the final degree is because of these segments right here. So, so you'll notice that this right here, there is a spline missing in four different positions. Here, here, on the back side, and then directly underneath. And that corresponds with the pitman arm, which has a wide block here, 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 and here. It is only going to sit in one of four positions, and when all of this is in the vehicle, it actually will only fit in one position. So as long as you are really close on the centering, you should be in good shape. And we need to count the splines. This is segmented, it gets a little bit easier. We're just gonna count one quarter of this shaft. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's eight teeth. We're gonna multiply that times four. 24, then you would actually add four more. So this is a 30 spline pitman arm shaft. To properly measure a pitman arm shaft, you're gonna use a set of calipers. You're gonna to wanna to make sure it's zeroed. And we're gonna open it up, we're gonna use the flats on our jaws. And we're gonna come down here across the splines not across the segment. We're gonna go across continuous splines. So we're gonna measure up at the top. That gives us 1.12, 1.14, somewhere in that neighborhood. So this is an inch and one eighth shaft with 30 splines. To measure a pitman arm, so we're gonna use the segments so this is one big tooth, this is one big tooth. We're gonna measure from this side to the opposite side so that we know we have a good cross section. I'm gonna lock that in there and then I'm gonna pull this over here to that one. And there we go. 1.188, flip it over, measure the other side, same place. measures 1.22. Because pitman arms rarely seat at the top of the shaft, the best way to measure one is with the spline count. 
This is a one and quarter inch 36 spline pitman arm. And that's all there is to centering a gearbox and measuring the pitman arm and pitman shaft. Make sure you check out Borgeson.com for all your steering component needs. Thanks for watching.